Welcome to Still Speak Podcast. This is an update on the Gabby Petito case. So today was one of those days when you're following a case and information comes out that causes you to walk around your house, staring at your phone, mumbling curse words under your breath, and thinking to yourself, what the hell is going on? Seriously, what is going on? And I know I'm not alone in that. I know there's probably many people out there that do similar, and we're doing that today. Well, we didn't get any developments from the FBI directly. As far as the investigation is concerned, they are still being quiet. That's totally normal. I don't expect them to give us any updates anytime soon unless something significant happens. That being said, we did get another interview from Cassie, Brian's sister, after she had spoken out yesterday on her front lawn to protesters. And I talked about that interview last night in my video. Uh, I may refer back to that interview a, a few times in this one, but she gave another one. She did an interview with Good Morning America again this morning. And we also saw that the four parents of Gabby Petito, which would be Jim and Nicole and then uh, Joseph and Tara, uh, appeared on the Dr. Phil show. And it was a very heartbreaking segment about Gabby and what has unfolded since she was found deceased. Now, we're going to talk about the what the hell moment of the day first and that came from the laundry family lawyer now i say laundry family lawyer but we need to make a a distinction here okay that doesn't include cassie because we find out today that steve berlino is not representing cassie which backs up what she said yesterday where she said that he basically threw her under the bus and that he's the one that told her parents not to speak with her So he confirmed today that no, he's not the lawyer for Cassie. Now, Cassie is older. She is married and has children. And so I wouldn't really classify her in the laundry family. When I say the laundry family uh, lawyer, it's better than saying the laundry parents and Brian. You know, so I'm just going to continue saying laundry family. But that does not include Cassie. So, let's first rewind, like we've done many times on this channel. I like to constantly repeat information, especially factual or timeline type stuff, because the more I say it, the more it's going to stick in your head to remember it, right? So if you hear me like recapping something over and over and over again, and you're like, oh my gosh, she said this in the other video, there's a reason for that. I'm trying to help you to remember it, right? So, rewind. On the 17th of September, the parents of Brian, who is Christopher and Roberta, had their lawyer, Stephen Bertolino, call the Northport Police Department because they wanted to speak with them. Based on a tweet that Northport PD had put out, we were all thinking that Brian was ready to talk. Or that his parents were. Because at that time, we thought Brian was in the home. I mean, even Gabby's father believed that. Because on the Dr. Phil show and in other interviews, he made a a comment to the effect that he's at home in the safety of his house sitting in in a lazy boy, basically, is what he said. You know, getting home cooked meals, etc. So we were all thinking he was in that house. I mean, to the point that just before this, protesters were outside the home and they were screaming, not at the parents, at Brian because they thought he was inside. So we all thought he was inside. And so it got even to the point that when the F, um, Northport police had showed up, excuse me. That the protesters, while they were in the home, the protesters outside were saying, come on, Brian, come out, you know, have the courage, blah, blah. And they were even making comments about the brown paper bags 
the uh, Northport police had brought into the home saying, oh, look at him, he's such a coward. They're going to give him a paper bag to put over his head to come out here. Meanwhile, we find out a short time later, Brian wasn't even in there. And we that's when we found out that he was gone. And the parents said that he left to go hiking in the Carlton Reserve, which is near their home, on the 14th, which was that Tuesday. When they went to the home on the 17th, it was Friday. He left in uh, the Mustang, uh, and then he didn't return. When he didn't return, the parents actually went and brought the Mustang back to their home, and they claim it was because there was a note on it about it, you know, being towed if it wasn't removed. Okay, so if you've been following along with that, you knew that. But again, I just needed to, re- you know, say it again for the 16,000th time. And then immediately after this, we saw footage from a reporter showing that the Mustang was not in the driveway on the 14th, but it was there on the 15th. And this made sense for the 14th because, well, if he left the 14th, that would make sense why the Mustang was not in the driveway. However, uh, there was a conflict because Stephen Bertolino, their lawyer, uh, claimed that the parents brought the Mustang back to their home on the 16th, which was Thursday. And we knew that couldn't be true or that they were lying or, you know, weren't honest about which day it was because the footage showed otherwise. The footage showed that it was back on the 15th, not the 16th. And so they kept with this 14th date as it being when Brian left and the last time he was seen. And they've kept this date for weeks now freaking weeks so since the 17th of september so now it's 13 uh, days of fifth 18 days almost three weeks it has been said over and over and over and over and over again that brian left on the 14th the tuesday until today yep until today you heard me right Now, a reporter asked Stephen Berlino, can you confirm the date that Brian went missing? Was it the 13th or the 14th? Now, side note here, I'm not sure why anybody was even trying to confirm this when I just said that it had been said a million times that Brian went missing on the 14th. I don't know if something came up for them to ask him this or if they were just trying to trip him up to reconfirm the date I'm not quite sure but thank goodness they asked him uh, for our sakes because the reply that they got from Stephen Bertolino was quote the laundries were basing the date Brian left on their recollection of certain events upon further communication with the FBI and confirmation of the Mustang being at the laundry residence on Wednesday the 15th, we now believe the day Brian left to hike in the preserve was actually on Monday, September 13th. Unquote. Are you shitting me right now? That's a huge change. Yeah, it's only one day. But one day in this story is a pretty dang big deal. So, yeah, that was a little, um, unreal to see today. Now, this means that Brian has now been gone for 22 days, not 21 days. And this also would mean that when we thought that he had about three and a half to four full days, depending on what time he left before police knew about it, it's actually now four and a half to five full days, depending on time he left, that he had a head start. Do you know how far he can get in four and a half, five days? Seriously, far. 
And this means that they did return the Mustang to their home on Wednesday the 15th, which would have been two days after he left, like the footage had showed. And that also means that they spent the next two days after that. So they brought the Mustang home on Wednesday. They spent the rest of the day Wednesday, all day Thursday, and most of the day on Friday before they called the police to let them know on Friday evening that Brian had been gone. And they originally said Tuesday. We're now finding out it was actually Monday. I haven't defended the parents on this channel but I have thrown out possibilities I've thrown out things that I wanted people to consider I also spoke a lot about their behavior and that those behaviors can actually have pretty simple explanations and I also have talked heavily about we don't know if they're guilty and you know, so on and so forth. I'm sure many have considered what I I have said as defending, but really it was just looking at it from all sides and trying to open minds to consider that there's other things that could be at play here or other possibilities and what have you. And I stand by every word I've said so far. Um, I still do, even with this new information. Um, i said that if new information came out I would reevaluate and I did today. So, you know, when I initially heard this, I was like, okay, what the hell? What the hell is going on here? This is sketchy as all hell. But instead of running to my mic to start spewing to you random reactive thoughts, I had to let it process. I gave it time. And I came to this This really could be an easy mess up in the middle of all the chaos where their whole lives are falling apart and crumbling. And so as a result, they mix the days up because one day, you know, 10 days feels like one day, right? All the days are kind of rolling together with one another. It could be that. It it could be. And think about how many people who are following this case who can't even keep the basic dates right about the story. It would be ten times worse, if not a hundred times worse, for the laundries, given they're the ones living in this mess. You know, and that being said, the fact that there is another day added here, that Brian got a head start, definitely gives me pause. It should give everybody pause. And... Not just pause to consider their involvement because I've already done that. And this definitely falls into suspicious category. But it also makes me pause to consider maybe they didn't necessarily help him. But they figured out rather quickly what he was doing. And they ended up giving him more time to get where he needed to be. So let's say he went for this hike. The first day he didn't come back home, they were thinking to themselves, oh, shit. And they were like, okay, well, maybe he's just spending the night out there for the day. Okay. And then the next day came, and they were like, oh, okay. And at that point, they figured it out. And I've mentioned this before. They figured it out, like, oh, God, he, what if he actually did take off? And at that point, they just wanted to give him, yeah, a head start, right? Or... Yeah, a head start, basically. There's no way around that. Um, And some people would consider that helping. And and it would be a form of helping. I see helping him more as aiding him or helping him purchase, you know, purchase supplies or a phone, which he did purchase a phone, but allegedly that phone is with the FBI now. Um, or helping him by they know where he is and they're not willing to disclose his location or if they're communicating with him or they're funding him. That's how I see helping. This might be a case of uh, sort of helping. I don't know how, what other word to really put that. Basically saying, okay, well, he already took off. It's already been a day. He's going to do what he wants to do. He's an adult. We're just going to let him go. And then eventually we'll just have to tell the police that he's gone. I don't think that's actually necessarily illegal either for them to do. 
especially in Florida, given the rules and um, the laws and what have you. So this would mean that they had, like, no prior knowledge that he was going to attempt to take off. And it's funny, because I remember when we first found out that he had taken off, and everybody was like, why would they let him go for a hike? And a lot of those same people were the ones that said, why did Gabby's parents allow her to travel cross country? I mean, they are, were adults. And if they were under the impression that he was not involved in her disappearance, to them, it wouldn't be weird that he would go for a hike to relax, to clear his head, his, his girlfriend, fiance is missing, right? I know many people just want to believe these people are the devil incarnate. Trust me, I get it. I was once the same way. But I had to learn from other cases that not everything is black and white. Not everything is clear as day. And not everything is plain and simple. It's just not. It's not always the case. And if Brian's a narcissist, that like so many people believe he is, which I feel is a highly overused word, um, you know, it makes sense that his parents would also be his victims. And he they would want to defend, protect, help, etc. their son. Because he they would be technically on his list of victims if he's a narcissist. And if Ryan cared a little bit about his family, he would turn himself in and save his family from this nightmare they're living in, especially his sister, because she has his nephews. And he does appear to love his nephews, so you would think that he would want to end this for them. And even if his parents were willing and did help in any way or continue to do such, if he had an, even an ounce of concern for them, he would ignore them and tell them, I don't want your help. I'm turning myself in. I can't do this to you and Cassie and the boys because she's got two boys, it seems. Right? If he had anything in him, his thought wouldn't be about himself. It would be about his family. So, yeah, you can go along the lines of this lines up with narcissist you know, behavior traits that he's doing this. Because he comes back, he has this van, he tells them whatever he tells them. You know, they go out of their way to help him out based on whatever he told them. They get him a lawyer, etc. And then he's like, all right, well... You deal with this. I'm out. As if this now suddenly became their problem, not his. And he hasn't done this. And he's been missing for 22 days. (laughs) I hate using the word missing. It just kind of comes out. Missing, you know, can cover so many different things. I prefer vanished, disappeared, gone, went, you know, fled. But um, with this new information pushing the departure date from his home a day back, it makes it closer to when he knew that the jig was up. And because the 11th, the police came to his home. Boom, right? At that point, Brian knew when they knocked that it was either to say that they found her dead already or that they wanted to speak with him, right? Or they were there to ask where she was. At least in Brian's mind, this is how I envision it. He sees the cop walking up the driveway. He knows the van's out there, right? And he knows where or what happened to Gabby. And he sees them coming up the driveway, and then you hear... (coughs) He's thinking, probably, oh, crap. They either found her body, or they're here to ask me where she is. They're going to be asking me about the van. This was like the defining moment for him. This was He knew this is it. This is my moment. The moment he had avoided for almost two weeks at this point. And up to that point, he, you know, drove all the way home. Then he spent ten carefree days back at home without Gabby. He went camping with his family, eating s'mores, doing a ton of nature things similar to what he did with Gabby just a few weeks prior. He allegedly mowed the lawn, took a bike ride with his mom, 
And all of that kind of smells to me like someone who was trying to spend time with his family because he they knew that the clock was ticking or he knew the clock was ticking. And those are all things that normal people do. But when you put it in the context of the story, right, it makes it more seem like he was spending time with his family intentionally because he knew that wasn't going to be going on for much longer. Especially the fact that he was riding his bikes with his mom. What 23-year-old goes bike riding with their mom? I mean, I'm sure some exist out there, but is that like really common? Uh, I'm not so sure about that. I wasn't riding no bikes with my mom at 23. No offense, mom, when you're listening to this. While there's so many questions about this case, I think one of the biggest questions we all have is, why did you come back to Florida from Wyoming? Now, if you live out in Wyoming, you wouldn't be saying back to Florida, but uh, I do live close to Florida, and so therefore I say back to Florida. But why? Why would you come back with the van? Why wouldn't you already quote unquote on the run because you're out there nobody knows what the hell you could have just disappeared and people would have thought that you and her something happened to you and they would have never found you right think about how many people we found out when gabby was missing are also missing from national parks he could have just taken off and people would have just assumed that they were both dead somewhere you know rotting in one of the national parks and de- you know decomposing out there never to be found he didn't do that. He. Can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I laugh at this because it's just crazy to me. But when I think about that question further, it makes me wonder if he intentionally did that for several reasons. One, to come back and get whatever he needs to go on the run, like if he needed specific things from his home, or because he wanted to see his family before he did such. Because he knew it was that was it. It was going to be done. You know, he needed to go home and, and buy as much time as he possibly could to spend some time with them. So he can basically leave them with some sort of memory uh, of, his t- of his time with them. I don't know. Because then I go back to, well, he doesn't really seem too concerned about his family right now. Because he basically was like, peace. You deal with this. I'm out. And left them high and dry having to deal with all the backlash from from this, right? So it's like, does he care about them enough to want to come home and spend time with them? That's the only explanation I could come up with that made him come all the way back to Florida to spend time with them for X amount of days before taking off when things got, you know, hot. These are just some thoughts that I've been having. So anyways, so they come to his home on the 11th. Knock, knock, knock. On the 12th, they take Gabby's van, okay? And by the 13th, and not long after his lawyer, either before or after his lawyer, put out a statement about how he had advised Brian not to speak. Brian was out. He was gone. That, two days after the police showed up to his house. Two freaking days. And he made sure that he was never going to have to speak, at least not anytime soon. It's been almost a damn month since he left. Day 22, tomorrow's day 23. Almost a month. We have yet to have heard about any concrete sightings of Brian Laundry. We've seen a whole lot of people who look like Brian Laundry in like 15 different states. Can't all be him at one time. Maybe the FBI has a concrete sighting of him. You know, we just don't know about it. But I mean, they are still hanging out in the Carlton Reserve doing many searches. At the same time, they're also not going to share with us with, er- with any uh, leads they have. So we're in the unknown if Brian is even alive. And at first, I actually did think he was deceased. Now I don't believe that at all. I do believe he's out there. I absolutely believe he's out there and he's hiding. We may talk about this a little bit more, but let's move on for a second here. Because Steve didn't stop there today. (laughs) He also was asked to send the flight explainer about the flight that Brian took 
to Florida on August 17th. Now, this August 17th thing, we heard from Gabby's side of the family. We weren't completely sure if this was true. Well, now we heard it from Cassie yesterday when she was talking to the protesters outside of her home that he did come home on August 17th. So her saying that backs up also the Petito family. Therefore, it's true. So he was, you know, in Florida from August 17th to the 23rd. We also now have it confirmed that he didn't drive. He flew. And we know the amount of days, like I just said. So... What was still up in the air was what he came to Florida to do. And what he did was, according to the lawyer, let me read you the text actually first. Brian flew home to Tampa from Salt Lake City on the 17th and returned to Salt Lake City on the 23rd to rejoin Gabby. To my knowledge, Brian and Gabby paid for the flights as they were sharing expenses. Brian flew home to obtain some items and empty and close the storage unit to save money as they contemplated extending the road trip. I have a lot to say about this, but first, so we didn't know if it was, originally we didn't know if it was he flew home and moved stuff from the parents' home into a storage unit, and then it was also said that he moved stuff from the storage unit into his parents' home. He's saying it's it was moved the stuff from the storage unit into the parents' home, basically. And that they, you know, were closing out the storage unit. So now that whole thing is confirmed and we have information related to that. Whether or not it's all true and the real reason why he came home is up for debate and we're going to discuss that. Let's start with this text actually, like, makes no sense without even, like, deeply diving into it. Like, right off the bat, his very own statement is utterly ridiculous and absurd. Now, let me explain, and then we'll go deeper. So, his text says, Brian and Gabby paid for the flights because they were sharing expenses. But then, he says they flew all the way home or he flew all the way home, to empty the unit to save money. Somebody, please tell me this lawyer does not actually believe in what he just wrote. (laughs) Somebody, please tell me that he does not actually believe his own statement. Now, he may just be repeating, right, what was told to him, but this text alone just on face value makes no sense at all but let's get into it okay because there's a few things i want to say about this so when gabby and brian and i said this multiple times like before especially in the body cam videos that i've done when they were stopped on august 12th when the officers were talking about giving them a break and taking a breather blah 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 okay when during that time brian nor gabby mentioned that Brian was flying home in just five days. And I said that you would think in this circumstance where they're talking about taking breather from each other and they've been fighting a lot lately, that at some point one or the other or both would have mentioned like, yeah, we've just been spending a lot of time with each other, but it's okay because like in five days I'm actually going to be flying home. Or yeah, in a couple of days he's going to be flying home and he's going to be gone for like a week so we're going to get a really long break from each other so that would be good. Neither one of them said this, which led me to believe that this wasn't a planned trip, that this wasn't something that they had on the calendar. So while that's not fact, that's just my opinion, it could just be they just didn't mention it, I just personally felt that this circumstance would have led them to disclosing this information to the Moab officers, and they never did. So you have five days later now, Brian takes a flight. So not only does he take a flight, he takes a round trip flight, and he also has her staying in a hotel for all these days. So you have the 17th, 18th, the 19th, the 20th, the 21st, the 22nd, the 23rd, because they check out on the 24th. So seven days or seven nights that they're staying in this hotel, okay? And Everything price-wise right now is inflated, okay? 
And beyond that, during COVID last year, when flights started to resume more, flights were really cheap. But since then, they have skyrocketed again. Like, my mom was getting flights for like 70 bucks. Now she's back to paying like $300 for a round, tra- round trip ticket, okay? So let's talk about the body cam again because remember he was asked do you have money for a hotel and he ultimately was put up in the hotel because of the safe haven he was the victim and at one point when one of the officers asked if he had money he was like no we definitely don't have any money that's for sure now he could have been lying because he wanted that free hotel but then gabby was told that she could take the van and go stay somewhere and they even told her where she can go take a shower for a few bucks and it didn't sound like Gabby went and got a hotel and paid for a hotel. And you would think if they had the money that she would have been like, I'm not staying in this van by myself all night long in the middle of nowhere that I don't know while he's sitting up in a hotel. I'm going to go get a hotel too, right? We don't know if she did, but you would think that she would have been like, oh, no, 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 I'm just going to, I'm not going to stay in the van. I'm just going to go get a hotel too because I, I'm, I'm too scared to stay alone in this van by myself all night long. But now let's take this even further. (laughs) Because he says, you know, that Brian flew home to get some items, okay, and to empty and close the storage unit to save money. Now, his sister says it wasn't like a storage unit. It was a storage locker, whatever. Let's just say it's about a hundred dollars, depending. Climate controlled storage locker, hundred to one hundred fifty bucks, okay, a month to have this unit. And you're gonna tell me that you paid for a hotel for her for seven days, and you paid for a round trip ticket to Florida to fly home and close that unit so you can save money because you were considering extending the trip it wasn't even that you already decided to extend the trip you were considering it that makes no sense at all that you would spend x amount of money so let's just say her hotel was a hundred dollars a night it was the fairfield inn okay in salt lake city hundred dollars a night they're talking seven hundred dollars for this hotel maybe she got like a group on so we'll say five hundred right because people get like weird deals $500 $500 for the week, plus his plane ticket. You're talking about $1,000, including food and blah, blah, blah. Okay, $1,000 to go fly home to empty out a storage unit? Who believes that? Please tell me you don't believe that. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. And I know that their trip wasn't ending anytime soon because i remember there was discussion that they were supposed to meet up with somebody around halloween which at the time was a couple of weeks out it's now very close to us but you know your your original plan didn't even finish yet and you guys are considering extending it but you don't make a definitive choice whether or not to extend this and you fly home to do this when you could have just if he let's say he had the key to this unit on him okay he could have mailed that to his parents and had them remove the stuff from the storage unit and put it in their home yeah they're older but he would have been like mom dad could you do me a favor could you like lock you know take this key and go to the storage unit and close it up and then i'll call and tell them that we, we no longer need it so i could save some money you really needed to fly home and spend close to a thousand dollars to do this Because, I mean, even if you think about it, so if they were supposed to stay out until October, so you had, you know, payment for September and October. Say, let's just max it out at 150 a month. 150 in September, 150 in October. And let's say they were going to extend their trip to almost Christmas. So November and December, right? So now you're looking at $600 in month, in on all those months of payments to the storage unit versus the thousand dollars or possibly even more. I'm just doing estimates here that it took you to fly home and close out this unit. No, sorry. Uh uh. And to do this and to decide to go home to do this five days after you two were just stopped because you had an altercation that was so bad that witnesses felt uncomfortable enough to call 911, you're now considering staying together in this van, isolated to each other longer? Mm -hmm. No. 
there's more to this story than that. There's way more to this than, than this just, I came home for a storage unit. I'm sorry. Period. End of story. Now, Brian might have told his family that that was the reason why. If I was his parents, I'd be like, that's really stupid, son. Just send me the key. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have believed that. I'd have been like, uh, that's dumb. Don't do that. <laughs> Save yourself money. I'll go take care of it. But, I mean, he could have told him that. He could have told his sister that. He could have told the lawyer that. But it doesn't mean that that's what actually happened or that's the real reason. Just like... I highly doubt that Gabby, you know, told her parents the real reason they were stopped in Moab. Now, we do know that she was sharing with Nicole Schmidt that they were arguing more, but I just have this feeling she did not tell her the truth about what happened during that incident as far as what unfolded between them and the officers, which, of course, her mother later finds out, like the rest of us, with that. So, yeah, um, I'm just not, that doesn't make any sense at all. Now, having a storage unit in Florida isn't abnormal because we don't have basements in South, in Southern states. Many of the Southern states don't have basements. So, you know, his parents' house is only 1,400 square feet. They might not have a lot of room. And, um, I don't know what their dry, um, garage looks like some people use that as their storage maybe they have their own stuff in there and that's why they couldn't have stuff in there who knows but i mean he ultimately ends up doing that anyways so i don't really know why they had the storage unit to be in with right uh this also could be why they were actually looking in the shed during the executed um uh search warrant on the home there was officers and uh, agents who went into several sheds in the backyard so maybe that's where brian moved some of his stuff to which makes me wonder if something was hidden by brian on his parents property in one of these storage sheds because they seem really interested in the storage sheds but anyway point being is it's not totally abnormal that he would have a unit because of there being no basements in Florida. But at the same time, if he ultimately ended up emptying out that unit to his parents' home, that tells me that they did have room there for the stuff. So I don't even know why they had the unit to begin with, but it doesn't even matter because they did have one. I'm just not um, believing that th- th- he flew home to solely empty out this unit. Let's move on. And like I said, there was another text with Steven Bertolino where he was asked who he represents. And he said that he represents Brian Laundry, Christopher Laundry, and Roberta Laundry. And you just heard my phone dying. <laughs> uh, so he was clarifying that he does not represent Cassie. And it's interesting that he said, I represent Brian Laundry when he supposedly spoke to brian on the 13th he said that he spoke to him at his parents home and at some point after that if he's telling the truth is when brian left so he was only really brian's lawyer for about two days before he took off so we don't even know if he's alive right now and we're gonna uh, wrap this up talking about i'm not gonna talk about the dr phil show real but I'm going to mention some of those things. Then we're going to wrap it up with something about Cassie. And then we'll call it a night. The Dr. Phil show was very heartbreaking. You can watch the episode. I'm not going to like make you listen to it and stuff like that. You can go listen to it yourself. But there's a few things that stuck out to me. Uh, their lawyer, Richard Stafford, was with them during this interview. And Richard Stafford, whether he was allowed to do this or not, if it was a slip up, I'm not sure. He actually did say the credit cards were Gabby's, that he used Gabby's cards. Now, we all assume that, but the arrest warrant never mentioned that. Neither neither did the FBI. So now we're hearing from the family lawyer for the Petito and Schmidt families that it was Gabby's card. So that was very interesting to hear and was confirmation. So now it's factual. Uh, I'm not so, so sure he was supposed to say that, but he did. Um, they also talked about how they knew it was Gabby. So Jim Schmidt was out in Wyoming and he was in a conference room and they came rushing in there because they wanted to tell him before news got out 
and the way he knew it was her was that the remains had a sweatshirt that was something that Gabby loved. It was a sweatshirt she often wore, and she had bought it bought it locally. And this is how they knew it was her and not somebody else. I think I know what sweatshirt it is because she mentions the sweatshirt in the body cam footage. Uh, at one point, I need to find the clip where she says it. She talks about the sweatshirt in the van. So I think it might be that same one. And this is how he knew. So then he called the other parents. So his wife, which would be Gabby's mother, and then Gabby's father and Gabby's stepmom. And they were all on a conference call. And he had to break the news to them, which is heartbreaking because they weren't all together to hear that awful news. And of course, you know, they have a lot of anger and resentment and confusion and, you know, just so many different mixed emotions that are happening. And so, you know, they view the parents in a very bad way. And they have the right to, right? They didn't want to help them find their daughter. They didn't return their calls. So I can understand their position as far as the parents are concerned. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the parents are involved or did anything illegal or what have you like we talked about there's so many different possibilities here then they might have been really in the dark but the anger and feelings that these families have towards the parents are obviously very understandable right because it's their daughter and she's dead <laughs> so i mean it's, it's awful and they have every right to that opinion of course I suggest you go watch it and listen to it. It is is very uh, touching and very sad. And, you know, of course, they called him a coward and um, had asked him to turn himself in if he ever loved her. Dr. Phil asked Brian to turn himself in, etc. So that's that. And this morning in Cassie's interview with Good Morning America after she spoke with protesters outside her home yesterday... She actually gave Good Morning America several pictures of Brian at Fort DeSoto campground with her children. And I want to talk about it because in other videos I talked about Brian hiding himself. I talked about how he, in the body cam he doesn't want to be in the sun because of his bald head and how he made a joke about taking her sombrero or her hat that she had in the van to basically cover his head you know, from the sun. And I talked about how masks are such a acceptable thing in, in our society right now that even if you see somebody outside wearing a mask, you wouldn't think twice about it. And I told you how I was at the beach recently outside and people had masks on so yeah you wouldn't if you see somebody with a mask now you wouldn't think twice about it two years ago before all this you would see somebody with a mask and you'd be side-eyeing them thinking what the hell is this dude up to why is he wearing a mask because it wasn't a normal part of our lives at that time so I expect that Brian's out there. He definitely has his head covered, in my opinion. He most likely has his face covered, which would only leave his eyes and eyebrows that you can see. Depending on what kind of hat he's wearing, you might not even see the tops of his ears. I see many people talking about his shape of his ears kind of look like elf ears. Well, if he has a hat on that's covering the tops of his ears, you're not even going to see that. You're just basically going to see his eyes and his eyebrows. But even if he didn't have a mask on, in these pictures that Cassie shared, they're a little disturbing. Um, Very disturbing. Two of them are Brian straddling a large tree branch. And his one nephew is in front of him. He's in the middle. And then one's behind him. And they're all looking at the camera. And he has this big, normal, like, everything's totally fine smile on his face he's wearing a hat uh, a ball cap 
And in the second picture, they're sitting on a large tree branch, but they're actually sitting on it, looking forward at her, and he's got his arms around both of his nephews. Again, same outfit with a ball cap on. But the biggest thing that stuck out to me in these pictures is he's got a full grown-in mustache. Yep, he does already. It's fully grown in. He's got a lot of facial hair going on. And so you see the beard, you see a little bit of hair on the chin. It looks like the pictures are kind of blurry, so it's hard to fully tell. But um, some hair on the uh, chin, and then he has a full mustache going on. So now take that into consideration. He's going to be covering his head, and he's got a mustache of sorts uh, on his face, along with a grown-in beard. We were wondering if he had facial hair at this point. And he obviously, as of September 6th, he did. Now, did he shave it before he took off on the 13th? That's possible. Or was he growing it out intentionally because he knew he was eventually going to take off and he was preparing for that? Who knows? There's another picture she shared where one of her children is with Brian standing out on rocks out in the water. And it's far away, and it's from behind. And in this picture, it appears that Brian took possibly his shirt and wrapped it around his head, kind of like a bandana rag type of style hat on his head. And I would assume this was to cover his head from the sun. So that's another consideration there, that he might not actually be wearing some sort of hat, but he might be wearing uh, a bandana of sorts on his head. But yeah, these pictures are really, one in particular, the smile on his face, I'm looking at it right now, and it's just, it's, it's just so normal. It's just so normal looking, and if you didn't know what had happened, you wouldn't think twice about this picture. But you're looking at this picture in the context, and you're like, okay, this is September 6th. He had been home for five days at this point. And as far as we know, Gabby died sometime between August 27th and August 30th. So this is, you know, a little disturbing to look at him all smiling and normal and acting as if he's just your regular average Joe guy out camping with his family. Oof. Now we're going to play cassie's interview on good morning america this morning i'll pause at certain points to comment on it it's only roughly about four minutes or so and it's really good that she did this uh i think it was needed i think the public really wanted to see this and so it was nice to see her actually in a interview that wasn't her speaking to just a bunch of protesters so let's listen for her brother and this morning a new message from gabby Petito's family as well abc victor kendo is in miami beach florida with the very latest good morning victor good morning michael we have learned so much more about this case in the week since we last heard from cassie laundry it turns out she was also on that family camping trip that brian took with his parents after he returned home without gabby Petito. cassie insists she still doesn't know where her brother is no, I do not know where Brian is. I'd turn him in. Overnight, Cassie Laundry attempting to set the record straight, speaking out for the first time since Gabby Petito's body was found and her brother Brian was reported missing, later named a person of interest in Petito's murder and wanted by the FBI in a fraud investigation. I really wish he had come to me first that day with the van because I don't think we'd be here. I, I hate how they edit interviews. Because right when she was saying that if she knew where Brian it was, she would turn him in. They're like cutting her off and talking over her. I just let the people talk. My goodness. It drives me crazy. Just let them talk. But, uh, you know, and that's interesting. You know, this is this why the parents won't speak with her? Is that the real reason? Maybe they, they are involved. And they know that the sister will be the one to cave and, and let police know where he is and that's why they're keeping her at arm's length that's a possibility don't get me wrong it definitely is or is this cassie just really fed up with everything that's happened and what it's causing to her kids and she's just like yeah i turn him in i don't know but that's really fascinating that she does say that 
So let's continue. Worry about him. I hope he's okay. And then I'm angry and I don't know what to think. I would tell my brother to just come forward and get us out of this horrible mess. And no detailing the left. And so there she basically is expressing her mixed emotions. She's worried about her brother. It's her brother. She's worried. She hopes he's okay. But at the same time, she's really angry. And can anybody blame her for being angry? I'd be freaking furious. If my brothers are listening right now, they know I'd be furious. I'd be flipping the hell out. And uh, she does express that she wished that on his way home, he had stopped at her home because, you know, she's playing with the what ifs. If, what if he stopped at our house first with that van? You know, would things have been folded the way it did? Or would I have been like, you need to go to the police and explain where Gabby is? So these are just things I'm sure she's thinking to herself. So let's continue. Last time she saw her brother. The last time I physically saw it and the last time I physically spoke to my brother was on the 6th. I've tried to get in touch with him, phone went to voicemail. Cassie, sharing this photo exclusively with ABC News, showing Brian and his five-year-old nephew camping at Fort DeSoto Park with their parents five days before Gabby was reported missing. We just went for a couple of hours and we ate dinner and had s'mores around the campfire and left. And there was nothing peculiar about it. There was no feeling of grand goodbye there was no nothing i'm frustrated that in hindsight i didn't pick up on anything it was just a regular visit by the time gabby was found 13 days later ryan had already vanished the day cassie learned of his so that's interesting right so you gotta think about this you know brian came back and her family didn't know and, you know, it was about, I think they said seven to eight days into it when they hadn't heard from her is when they started to get worried. You know, by day nine, it was like, okay, well, what the hell is going on? And by the 10th is when they were trying to contact Brian's family. We can assume that when they were trying to call Gabby all that time prior, that they were also trying to get a hold of Brian. And to no avail, right? And then we, of course, learn later that he actually got a new phone on September 4th. According to the attorney, it was the 4th. So you have to wonder, you know, at the time that her family was calling him, was he not even receiving these calls because he had a new number? If he got a new number. And if he got a new number, was that so that they couldn't get in contact with him? But oopsie. They had his parents' numbers. Now, Cassie claims that, you know, she didn't receive any phone calls from them, but Joe Petito had said a couple of weeks ago in the Dr. Phil episode that he did also call her. He may have just had the wrong number. But it's interesting that, you know, Brian might have changed his number and wasn't even receiving the texts from the parents. Not that he would have replied or called back anyways, but it's something to consider and think about that that was intentional so that they couldn't get a hold of him and he can just ignore them and not have to worry about them blowing up his phone. Who knows? And it's also interesting because she's looking in hindsight, right? And when something like this happens, you think back to like, was there signs? Was there this? And I believe her because I'm looking at this picture that she shared and it looks like a completely normal picture to me. Now, I wasn't in his presence. I don't know him to know if he was acting different. But just going off this picture, I would never in a million years, if I didn't know the story, know that there was something strange about this. So now if you think about it, if her parents got worried about the seventh or eighth day and the last text went out saying, you know, no service in Yosemite on the 30th of August, that does bring you to around the time that this family was camping, eating s'mores while Gabby was missing and her family was starting to get really concerned. And it's, that's a little stomach turning to think about, right? Now, the parents might not have known at this point. He might have told them some crazy story, like they broke up. I've mentioned this before. They broke up and she was in Long Island. So to them, this was a regular old camping trip. But Brian did know. He did know. He knew where she was. He knew where he left her. And he knew what happened to her. So the fact that he's out there sitting around a campfire with his family eating s'mores is psychotic 
to say the least, in my opinion. His disappearance, she says she immediately told investigators about that camping trip. It was not hidden from law enforcement. I've been cooperating with the police since day one. I have been in touch with law enforcement. And now she's calling on her parents to do the same. Does this for Gabby look like having someone come forward and tell the truth? I don't know if my parents are involved. I think if they are, then they should come clean. Cassie says her brother has taken multiple trips for up to five days at a time on the Appalachian Trail where multiple tips have been reported. And over the weekend, a possible sighting was reported to investigators along the nearly 2,200 mile trail near the Tennessee, North Carolina border. I wasn't sure about what he looked like. And then I went and parked and pulled up the photographs of him. And I'm 99.99% sure that was him. Police have said their factory in Brian's reported skills living off the grid in their search for him. But Cassie says it's unusual for him to be gone for this long. I'd say Brian. I want to pause there because this guy who's claimed to have seen Brian. I said last night I didn't really believe it because he said that after he saw this man, he Googled to see if it was Brian. But then when he called 911, he said Brian Lowry, which makes no sense because if you just Googled him, how the heck did you get the name wrong? And so I, I wasn't really believing that. Well, come to find out, law enforcement did find the man that this guy called about, and it was not Brian. So that's a done deal. It wasn't him. The other thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that she's unaware if her parents are involved, which would make sense because if she hasn't spoken to them, how would she know whether or not they're involved? But obviously, she's looking at it the same way most of the public's looking like, what the hell's going on and why aren't you guys, you know, talking and, and speaking to the public? Like, she doesn't know what's going on with them as much as we don't know what's going on with them according to her, and she does sound believable. Which makes me want to say this. I think it says a lot about Cassie that yesterday with the protesters and now in this Good Morning America um, interview that she didn't use this time to defend Brian. And a lot of people think that means basically that he is capable of doing this or she would have defended him. I take it as she didn't use this opportunity to make it about Brian, right? She's doing this out of concern for Gabby's family and her own family. And I took it as she didn't want to turn the subject to like, hey, my brother's like the best person who ever walked face the planet. There's no way he could have ever done something like this. I don't believe it for a single second. This is not the man that I know. You guys have this all wrong. She didn't do any of that. And I think that says a lot. And I think that may be why she's also... Um, a little iffy on whether her parents are involved too because she honestly doesn't know if they are and she's not taking this opportunity to be like my parents are really good people guys you know maybe there's more to the story you don't know she's not saying any of that right and so I have to kind of give kudos to her on that because so often that's what you do see you do see the automatic defending uh, she might just be smart enough to know that if she defends, people are going to get pissed. But there also can be a genuine feeling of wanting to help or to give the uh, public information to kind of ease them, to let them know like, hey, I really don't know what the hell's going on here, but I'm with you. I don't know what the hell they're doing or where Brian is at. I'm in the dark just like you, trying to relate to the public. Brian's a mediocre survivalist. It wouldn't surprise me if he could last out there a very long time. But also, I don't think anything would surprise me at this point. If the FBI finds him in Timbuktu, I'd be like, all right, well, that's where he was. I've got, I've got nothing. I hope my brother is alive because I want answers just as much as everybody else. Is there something on your cheek here? Looks like, did, did, he get, did you get hit in the face? Well, to be honest, I didn't wake him up first. Did he hit you, though? I mean, I mean, it's okay if you're saying you hit him, and then I, I understand if he hit you, but we want to know the truth if he actually hit you. Well, I see like, grabbed me, like, with his nail. She says the body cam video from the Moab, Utah police encounter is hard to watch. It's definitely painful to see everybody just be upset. It was pretty typical of them to, um, 
argue and try and take space from each other. But people saying that they saw public domestic violence, I've never seen anything like that from either of them. Now she wonders if more could have been done. I definitely feel like if they had all of the 911 calls from the multiple people they said that I think that it would have gone a lot differently and we'd be in a different situation. Cassie says she's as concerned as she is for her brother. She is mourning for Gabby and wants her family to know. I have to pause there because yes, Cassie, yes. If you have not seen my body cam footage, it's three parts already. I have to do the fourth part. In there, I said repeatedly over and over and over again that they did not have both witness. When they were at the scene, they only had one witness's story. The other witness is the one who said that he was hitting and slapping her. And she's saying if they had both the witnesses' statements, this might have gone differently. So that's coming straight from Cassie. Now, her saying that she'd never seen them argue, like hitting and slapping from either one of them, doesn't say a whole lot. Often with abuse, it's hidden. People aren't going to do that in front of others, especially not family members. Um, so that doesn't mean that it didn't happen with, between them prior. It's just that she just personally never saw it. So it doesn't say a whole lot, though. To know her heart is with them. I've been cooperating so that everyone gets answers. They deserve answers. Gabby's parents sending a message to Brian on the Dr. Phil show. If you truly loved her, you should turn yourself in. The Laundry family attorney released a statement saying in part that Brian's parents don't know where he is and the speculation by the public and some in the press that the parents assisted Brian in leaving the family home or in avoiding arrest is just wrong. So that's that. And no, we don't know if things would have been different if they got that second witness statement. But we'll never know if it would have been different, right? We don't. We would never know that. Unfortunately, that that's not what happened, and they didn't get that second statement. But in a story like this, there's all those what ifs, right? So you know, Gabby's parents were on the Doctor Phil show talking about the what ifs they have, you know. What if I advised her not to go? What if I told her not to move to Florida? You know, these are all things that cross your mind when something like this happens and you think of how it could have been avoided. And that's just an endless hole when you're in that situation because those what ifs aren't going to change anything. So that's unfortunate, but that's reality, right? And I think we had one other thing. Ah, uh, yes, uh, Dog the Bounty Hunter's daughter. They had gotten really quiet. They were really vocal, and they got really quiet. And uh, she tweeted today that we have a ton of information we're sorting through due to all the media coverage. We've had to let things cool down and allow the real leads to come back in. Tips are once again becoming more streamlined and verifiable. So I guess all the media attention caused them to get leads that were leading them nowhere. Um, I actually had wondered at one point if they actually got quiet because the FBI asked them to. And the reason why I wondered that was because, you know, Fort DeSoto Campground wasn't news to the FBI. It was news to us. And it was thanks to Dog who told us what the campground name was. He figured it out based upon a tip. So I had to wonder when he told the public this, if maybe the FBI got, you know, upset about that and and told him to kind of chill out. She's saying that because of the media coverage, they were basically getting all kinds of craziness in and now the real leads are coming back in. So that could be the truth. Who knows? And seems like Dog is still on the hunt for Brian Laundry. So we enter into day 23 and we are going to hope that this comes to a conclusion soon and then at some point uh, Brian messes up and is found. I really, really, really don't want this to turn into basically nothing and three years down the line it's like, oh, we found Brian Laundry and we're like, oh, oh gosh, that case... I don't think we'll ever forget this case because it just blew up the way it did. 
However, I just don't want that. I don't want that for her family. I hope that there's resolution soon for all involved in this case and that the truth will prevail. Until next time, I'll see you soon.